I'm kind of bored, so I thought I would just tell some stories so that people can make fun of me. And it's mostly retail stories. It's just retail stories, actually. I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make this fucking cinematic universe of my life by baiting you with sequel hooks. Well, I worked at the grocery store for two years. First year when I was 17, freshly graduated and waiting for college, or you call it a vocational school. And I worked for customer service. Another year I worked was, was when I was 19, when I dropped out, yes. Suffice to say, it was a shitty period of my life that actually isn't even over yet. You can quit the job that makes you feel shitty, but quitting doesn't make the shitty go away. One thing I want to get this straight is, I know lots of people say customer service sucks, like it's one of the worst jobs in the world, it's like getting a blowjob from a Komodo dragon. I actually enjoy customer service. I really like talking to different people and being nice to them and seeing them smile and shit when I say things. You know, that experience really opened my eyes to how people react when you actually do your job. And my job wasn't anything difficult, I wasn't a counsellor for violent criminals at prisons, I wasn't a drug mule or a hitman, my job was just to take care of a bunch of automated machines, so that if any confused customer came in and stuck their dick in the credit card slot, I'd just run over with my key and save their life. Not a very intense job, but I did it well, you know, I worked 6 hours a day, got paid, and I think one of the moments that really crystallised my time there was when I was helping this guy who had trouble with diapers, just feeding diapers. Feeding diapers in the plastic bags, not... You know, not wearing them. I wouldn't help him with that shit. I wouldn't touch that unless he paid me red light district fees. He was really fucking tussling with it. It was like the bag was made by a mischievous god to test humanity. But before the man could fail and prove God right that we're an unworthy species, I stepped in and pushed that motherfucker deep into the trenches. That just fucking forced it into the grave. Those diapers were definitely experiencing some PTSD from my power, from how I roughed them up. But of course, forcing shit never works. So the bag just ended up looking like Johnny Knoxville's nutsack. It was like just one cough away from bursting at the seams. I retreated into my office. It's not my office, it's, it's just a, a, where people sit down to escape work. Maybe eat a sandwich or something before they die. And returned with an even bigger plastic bag. These bags were heavy duty shit. These were reserved for the deliveries normally. But I used my connections to grant this man's one wish. With extra space, both this man and his, and his diapers could like, coexist next to each other with zero animosity. That's how I worked. I'm the miracle man at the grocery store. These diapers will no doubt work even harder to cradle his ass at night. And you know, the man didn't say much, he just left. You know, life was good just cruising in that customer service job until Christmas rolled around. You know that fucking thing about Christmas? That thing that everybody knows? How the winter moon somehow transforms normal human beings into ravenous beasts of consumerism? It turned my peaceful sanctuary into a fucking dystopian nightmare. It was an all-out fucking war between customers. There's fathers against sons, mothers against daughters, dealers against addicts, e-girls against patrons. The fucking snack aisle was overrun with street urchins, just taken over. The deli was conquered by a man named Trajan the Butcher. To say that it was hell on earth was an understatement, you know. Nothing was sacred under Saint Nick's madness. During Christmas, I don't get my normal job, I get moved to a food counter. The place where people order their Christmas food. Things like, you know, ham, bull testicles, whatever the fuck they eat during Christmas, I don't know. People just come over, tell me what they want, I write it down, write them down. And then on Chris close to Christmas Day, they'll come over and they'll just, you know, take it from me. Simple system, right? You know, nothing that needs Einstein to fucking unravel, nothing that would stump Sherlock Holmes. But the problem here was that this fucking place was terrible at organizing anything. You know, they wouldn't even be able to fucking organize a fucking four-piece puzzle. Because every time you go to the back of the, of the fucking store to try to get their orders, you would find nothing. You'd be in a fucking cold maze of boxes and meats. You won't be able to find anything. You'll be looking for a sunken treasure. You had a better chance of finding sushi made from the swamp man's flesh than this fucking customer's order because everything would just come in boxes. The boxes were in giant cages and the cages were just fucking ripped open and then everything would just fall out. So every time I went back to the store to find something, it's like finding the seven secret stones. And like a sewage system, the more you delay, the more pressure builds up. More pressure builds up, it eventually culminates in a sewage explosion of biohazard waste. The customers wanted me to die. Every time I left that fucking back store, they wanted me to die. I could sense the aura of bloodlust around them. 
If it wasn't for things such as the law and the police, they would 100% jump over that little tiny plastic counter I was hiding behind and turn me into a shrunken head. Strip me of my clothes and string me up on the fucking giant Coca-Cola banners during Christmas. And just leave me there to die from the elements. You know, that's a customer I've, I have a really strong memory of. You know, like smelling your mom's cooking and getting childhood flashbacks. But this is me hearing Michael Bublé and blacking out. Basically, I bought this guy his fucking shitty stuff. He opened it up. And he was pissed. He was angry. And what was he angry about? He was angry that his honey baked ham didn't have instructions on it. He can feel as bad as he wants. And even if I agreed with this fucking stupid motherfucker, I couldn't do shit. But of course, this guy didn't want that. He didn't like the idea of not having a bad guy that he can find immediately. So he threatened to tell my manager of this to get me in trouble. To him, I might, I might as well have been in that Chinese factory packing those things. And I maliciously took the instructions instructions off just to fuck with him. I am paid $6 an hour to suffer frostbite so you can eat cheap food, sir. I have no control over the qualities of these products. I have no goddamn clue where they are even from. Is this even ham? Not only that, it was a fucking tube of pre-cooked meat. Shitty experiences are normal for everyone who has a job. It's nothing special. I'm not some goddamn pariah for having a terrible work-related story as a teenager. And remember, I was only 17 years old when that happened. So I was like a fresh baby-faced boy. And at that moment, I felt like the adult world had just given me a sneak peek preview of reality by fisting me deep into my fucking asshole. I felt that shit in my stomach. I felt it in my gut. You know that bad swirling void in your stomach? As you slowly realize there's no fucking way to escape this situation. And of course I did something that any brave person would do and I started to cry. That's right, no one even gave me a medal for it. And of course I didn't cry like a baby who needs a tit in its face to eat some milk. I cried like a man. I was tearing up, but I held it back like a superhero holding back a dam, saving the local town. And the moment I looked up, this man's face completely changed. His disposition has been warped. His reality is shaken. It was as if in that moment when I cried, the camera zoomed in to my tears and it showed the reflection of his face, contorted into this demon who doesn't care about retail workers. And then a voice from a faceless narrator comes down and says, Do you feel like a hero now? And the man immediately changed his tone. He went from trying to get me in trouble because I didn't tell him how to cook meat, I didn't personally contact Gordon Ramsay and ask him for his secret recipe, to just patting me on the back, consoling me, trying to tell me that, you know, hey, yeah, your fault, kid. Uh, yeah, you know, government, uh, you, yeah. And actually, I didn't have that sour of an experience in that moment. When I look back on it, now, now that I think back on it, it feels as if I've seen a rare occurrence, you know? Seeing someone recognize their own assholeness, it's like a rare sighting. It's like finding Bigfoot or finding Atlantis. Or finding those fucking orders in the back store so the customers won't justify honor killing me. It was a really interesting experience to see that unfold before my eyes. And I have nothing else to say. So, yeah.